Hi friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. And you're wondering, if you're my friend, you would have known my name, right? <laughs> well, I welcome you to this channel. Today we're taking a look at a pair of knives that come in a set. And they are on a super special sale at Menards right now. Now, Menards is an American uh, sort of hardware department type store. They got all kinds of stuff in there. Yeah, so if you're in Canada and you've never been to the U.S., um, at least in the Midwest, I see a lot of Menards. And uh, you might not know about that store, but it's a big store out there, uh, like physically big. Their stores are large, and uh, they carry a wide variety of stuff. They've got a small selection of knives there, and Buck is one of the types of knives they tend to carry. And this set is on for less than half price, and it's less than, well, it's more than 75% off of the retail prices at other stores. So their starting price is the lowest I've ever found for these knives, these Rivals. There's the Rival 2, the Rival SS. There's also a Rival 1, which is smaller than the Rival 2, and a Rival 3, which is bigger than the Rival 2. And uh, simply the best price you can find anywhere. And now with their sale, $12.99 for these. And if you're familiar with Menards, you send back your receipt, you get another 11% back. <laughs> so that makes it very, very inexpensive. Now, these buck knives have uh, injection molded nylon handles, and they've got Buck's 420 HC uh, Boss uh, heat treated blades. So it's good quality blades uh, in terms of the steel quality, hollow grind, and uh, if you're interested, stick around. By the way, before I get into it, there's even a um, UK version of this knife with a nail nick slip joint instead of a back lock thumb stud. As is the Rival 1 and the Rival 3. It's just that the UK special is uh, got the slip joint. Maybe in Germany they can get the slip joint too. I'm not sure. Well, let's get to the tabletop and take a look at these knives. To start with, I'm going to talk a little bit about this knife uh, because most of the video is going to be about this knife. So I'm just going to cover a few details about this. It's back lock. We've got a little lanyard hole there. There's no pocket clip. And I've already told you the steel types. Hollow grind on both of these. One thing I don't like about this knife is Buck has to follow their traditions, right? And their tradition is that they like to put their model information on the Ricasso here. But even on this knife, they decided to just put their product number there and then their Buck details here. On this knife, they should have done the same thing. Like right now, this has got a cutting edge of 4.14 centimeters, 1.63 inches. And they could easily get a two inch cutting edge simply if they would have brought you know, the Ricasso back and if they would have let the tip come further. See, it ends right there, but the end of the handle is way over here. So if they would have made the tip come, you know, fill in half of this distance and the Ricasso back, you'd have a two inch blade, five centimeter. I mean, cutting edge. So that would have been better. But this one's got a decent back lock. There's no blade play up and down, or a very tiny bit up and down, which basic simple back locks tend to have. Side to side, not really. It's got rivets that hold it together. So it's not a knife that you can easily take apart. Uh, it's got decent traction to it on this injected, injection molded nylon. I'll talk about the cutting edge and stuff a little bit later, but since it's very, very similar, the grind angles on the cutting edge and the sharpness very similar to this one. I'll mention that stuff later on. So for now, we'll put this little guy in the corner up there. I often do a size comparison with my Ontario Rat knife, my Ontario Rat 1. And as you can see, it's definitely a smaller knife than the Ontario Rat 1 uh, when those pivot pins are aligned. You know, the blade's pretty close, but the handle's quite a bit smaller. And if we match up the cutting edge, so the tips are lined up right now. And as you can see, there's about a quarter of an inch longer on the cutting edge of the Ontario Rat 1. So yes, you get decent real estate with the uh, Rival 2. This is the Rival 2 here. Thumb studs, hollow grind, drop point, swedge here. 
back lock, well, actually it's a mid lock it's on the back. So it's on the spine, but it's a mid back lock and lock up is solid, but there's a tiny bit of up and down play and a fair bit of side to side play. Uh, this rivet pin could have been made a little bit tighter. I don't know what kind of washers they have in here because I haven't taken it apart because of the rivet pins. Uh, but lockup is okay for what you get, and especially for the amount you're paying at Menards on sale right now, not bad at all for what you have there. Stone wash finish, stone wash finish. Uh, there's the Buck, uh, their logo, their USA, and the model is 365. And then there's the date stamp there. I'll double check what date stamp that is for when this was made. And then this one, that's that. The injection molded, it's got nice texture on it throughout the handle here. A uh, little bit of jimping on what you might call the backspacer there. Deep carry pocket clip. And the pocket clip is quite functional. It works quite well. It you know looks a little bit odd from this perspective, but in a pair of pants, it doesn't look bad at all. and uh, put it in. It climbs over the edge very easily and goes right to full depth. And there you go. It's sitting in there nice and deep. I like that without it being a problem. One thing I don't like about this pocket clip, other than it's only right-handed and not right or left, when you've got it in your right hand like this, that edge right there gets a little hot for me right in the soft part of this part of my hand here. So I was cutting for a while and that did get a little bit annoying. The rest of the handle, not too bad. Um, I would take some sandpaper and just round off the inside edge of this plastic. Uh, because it's got a little bit of a plastic burr on it. Nylon can be, you know, a little bit annoying in the hand if you're squeezing tight. You know, if I squeeze tight for just, you know, that's 10 seconds now. You can see some lines in there <laughs> on my hand. Uh, where it was being squeezed, and there's that spot from the uh, lanyard, uh, not lanyard, the pocket clip right there. That's the worst one right there, see? So, yeah, not bad. In the left hand, it's actually quite comfortable with this pocket clip on this side, so I don't mind that at all. It's got uh, a strong back spring here on the back lock that keeps the blade in when you're not using the knife, so the spring just pulls it in and keeps it in, so that's good. Uh, ambidextrous thumb studs and they're the same size so that's good so easy to deploy this knife with your thumb that way it's decent these are very light knives well not very light but quite light knives I'm going to uh, go over the specs on this knife right now and as I go over the specs this little measuring tape will be on the screen so when this is gone you know I'm done talking about the specs the weight of this one is 69 grams, 2.45 ounces, and this guy is 19 grams, 0 0.7 ounces. The factory edge, the sharpness on these knives are both uh, lower than I expected. 225, 235 bess. 200 and less is considered sharp. Over 200 is considered not sharp enough. And so it does, it, they didn't come with a super sharp edge from the factory, or not even a very sharp edge. And that's even though Buck brags about their advanced edge 2X technology for sharpening. No, this was just hand sharpened, because there's some variation in the, how, the angle of the grind and stuff. And um, so I don't really like that. I think what they mean by their advanced edge 2X technology is, it's a shallow grind. Uh, a lot of EDC knives, especially with steel that's of this kind of quality, is usually about 20 degrees per side. These guys are 15.1 degrees, 16.1 degrees. And this little guy is very much the same. So that leads me to think that maybe their advanced edge 2X technology means that they've got a narrow, uh, narrow grind angles. Usually, you know, 15 degrees per side, that's usually for like a high-end kitchen knife, like really good steel and uh, you know, a kitchen knife that's not gonna run into you know, stones and dirt and all kinds of other things that you would on an EDC carry potentially come into. 
So I think the grind angle is too shallow. Let's talk about the rest of the angles and measurements. The cutting edge here, 7.9 centimeters, 3.11 inches. And they say it's 3.125, so a little bit less, but not a big deal. The blade length, so tip to the closest spot of this black nylon, 8.4 centimeters, which is 3.31 inches. The blade thickness, 3 millimeters, that's 0.12 of an inch, so just under an eighth of an inch, so not bad at all. Strong, durable shape of a blade of this 420 HC, 420 high carbon, which if you're not familiar, it's better than if it's, if a knife just says 420 or if it says 420 J2, the 420 HC is a little bit better steel. And so this is the better steel of the 420 series. So I like that. Uh, the blade depth now, I don't know why I got distracted with that, but I do rabbit trails quite often, don't I? 2.2 centimeters, 0.87 of an inch. The thickness of the edge behind the grind right here, 0.65 millimeters, which is 25.5 thousandths of an inch. And, you know, I prefer 20 thousandths of an inch, about half a millimeter thick. So it's a little bit thicker than I prefer as well. Not terrible, but it is what it is. And I have to call it what it is, right? And like I said, grind angle 15.1, 16.1 degrees on either side. So that's, you know, 30, 31.2 two degrees inclusive. That's too shallow of an angle, I repeat. The handle length here is 10.7 centimeters, 4.21 inches. The grip area, it's roughly nine centimeters, about three and a half inches, but this front part here can behave like a forward choil. I was grabbing it here for a while and cutting with it, and that's actually fairly comfortable. The uh, handle thickness is 1.2 centimeters, which is 0.47 of an inch, so very good for the size of the knife. The handle depth, that's this dimension, 2.8 centimeters, 1.1 inches. The knife depth when it's closed going into your pocket, a lot of people want to know this dimension here, uh, 3.15 centimeters, 1.24 inches, so one and a quarter inches across. And the total length of this knife when it's open is 19.1 centimeters, 7.5 inches. Uh, oh, I didn't, oh yeah, and the full length of this guy is 12.3 centimeters, 4.8 inches, and the cutting edge is 4.14 centimeters, 1.63 centimeters. That's one and one and five eighths of an inch for the cutting edge. And clearly it could be longer, but yeah, you can get your finger up here too. You can do a forward choil. <laughs> Not very impressive. And like you can see here, this one is a nail neck back lock knife. So how much does this knife cost? Well, $12.99 for these two knives together at Menards. So if you have any friends in the United States, ask them if they live near a Menards. You know, if you want low price, decent quality blade steel, so you've got a decent knife that's gonna last for a good long time, you know, it's not a premier knife. It's definitely a budget knife, but decent quality budget knife. Get somebody to buy it for you and mail it to you, no matter where you live. You know, include the receipt in there so that you won't be taxed to the, you know, to the hilt. Because at that price, you know, even if you got to pay 20, 30, 40% tax on this, you're still getting a super, super deal if you want this type of knife, that is. Um, I like that it feels fairly comfortable. You've got a decent blade shape, nice belly, straight edge here, sharpness choils, uh, you know, hollow grind I like, stone wash. You know, you could use these knives for an awful lot of work. You know, stick this thing in your keychain if you're allowed to carry a knife that way. And, you know, this is a great pocket knife with or without the pocket clip. In a glove box, you know, this is a good spare knife especially at this price. Um, so yeah, if you're in Canada or in Europe or anywhere basically outside of the United States, you'll want to get these. And if you're in the United States, but you're, I think on the East Coast, I don't think they have Menards. You know, if you know somebody on the in the Midwest or in the West, you know, this is not a bad thing. It's a good, you buy a bunch of these and have them as, you know, gifts to hand out at Christmas, you know, Stocking stuffers, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, we're almost halfway back to Christmas again, so... Ugh. 
That's just the way I, I think sometimes. Uh, the things I don't like about this knife, these knives, I don't like the rivet construction because I'd like to be able to take it apart to clean it thoroughly when it needs it. So that's a con in my opinion. Um, another con is too shallow of a grind angle. When I go to sharpen these, I'll sharpen them to 20 degrees per side and that sharp edge will last longer. And unfortunately, they didn't sharpen it even as well as I had hoped. Um, you know, it feels like it's sharp when you rub your fingers like this, but when I did my testing on my sharpness equipment, if you want to know about that, there's a link down below the video. I've made videos about how I measure the sharpness. Uh, that equipment's pretty, pretty um, sensitive, and you know, both of these knives did quite poorly. You know, 235, 225 best. Uh, okay, that's all the cons and stuff. Do I recommend these knives? Yes, I do. At the price at Menards, I totally recommend these knives. Um, you know, the prices in Canada, uh, I couldn't find a Rival 2, but a Rival 3 is 37 Canadian dollars. Uh, this guy is 23 Canadian dollars at Warriors and Wonders. You know, it's just, that's a lot of money. I don't recommend it at that price. Knivesandtools.co.uk uh, knivesandtools.de. Um, if you are in Europe or in the UK, uh, Knives and Tools has these knives at reasonable prices, some of the better prices from what I found when I looked around on the internet for prices for Europe and other places. Um, so check those out if you want to. I've got links down below. Uh, and if you're in Canada, you know, it'd be a good idea if you knew somebody in the US because these knives will be easy to import into Canada. Backlock knives. They come into Canada no problem across the border. They are not only are they legal, but our border uh, agencies consider them legal as well. And that's kind of nice, isn't it? If only they would consider all of the legal knives as legal knives. That would be the best thing. But that's not how Canada Border Services Agency works. Uh, and of course, this is my opinion. And uh, my opinion is that they are stopping a lot of knives that are totally legal to own. So there you go. I have no idea how long the sale's happening at Menards. The sale was still active today. This is Friday, the Friday, June 12th. Thanks for liking my videos. Thanks for sharing them. Thanks to my Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. Don't forget to leave a comment and uh, click on that like button if you like the video, that is. Thanks for everything you guys do for me. And I try my best to give you clear, honest, uh, solid reviews. Remember, always. Cut towards your chum, not your thumb. Bye for now.